Thank you, Rose family. Now to the full part of our evening. The history of the Rose has not only, does not only include giving first museum exhibitions to artists like Frank Stella, Louise Nevelson, Kiki Smith, Dana Schutz, Alexis Rockman, and a host of others. It is also the locus where ideas have been disseminated across the globe, where minds have gathered, where students daily do gather. In this spirit of the great tradition of the Rose Art Museum, I introduce to you tonight Mark Auslander from the Department of Anthropology, who will introduce our esteemed uh, symposium participants tonight. Mark Auslander, thank you. Thank you, Michael, and thank you all our friends in the Rose family. Thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, I speak, uh, as Michael said, I teach in the Anthropology Department and uh, also in the Cultural Production Program. And I speak on behalf of my colleagues in the organizing committee for this evening, uh, Andreas Teuber, uh, Remy Targoff, and Dirk Roosevelt. And as the four of us began to think about this evening, uh, in conversation with our colleagues, with our graduate students, uh, our undergraduates, many of whom are here tonight, it occurred to us that while we've been speaking so much, of course, of a, uh, of a visual arts museum, uh, that there was a larger crisis, perhaps, or a related crisis, a crisis of language, the very language through which we characterize our current historic moment, of course, we're all struggling for. Do we speak of the Great Recession? Do we speak of hard times, financial crisis, the meltdown? We're struggling for a language there. And for the broader question of how we make sense of the value of art, of the aesthetic, uh, of museums, uh, and of all other uh, 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 aspects of that which lie outside of, the, of commerce in its strictest sense, we all of us felt we were struggling for a language, and as Michael alluded, even the question of what it meant to have a museum, what does it mean to say the rose will be open, the rose will be closed, we found ourselves struggling for that. And so to seek some guidance to, to begin our conversation, we uh, called upon, and were very generously answered, uh, by three extraordinary people who have done as much as uh, anyone has to help us understand the nature of language itself. Stephen Greenblatt, uh, of course, uh, known to many of you, the Kogan University Professor of Humanities at Harvard University, known for his extraordinary uh, work not only in, in Elizabethan uh, criticism, 17th century uh, English literature, but more broadly for explorations of the very nature between, uh, of, the, uh, of the relationships between power, culture, and language. Uh, in, his, in his books ranging from Will in the World uh, to uh, New World Encounters and Marvelous Possessions, he's had an extraordinary impact on not only my graduate education, but the graduate education and undergraduate education of so many in this, in this room. Robert Pinsky, in 1997, named as the United States Poet Laureate and consulted in poetry to the Library of Congress, uh, who has championed not only, of course, an extraordinary uh, poetic voice, but more broadly, an insistence that all of us sh should engage in a, in a process of self-exploration self and a celebration of our own capacity uh, to speak, uh, to engage in poetry, a democratization of language, uh, and a call for a clarity of language that we sorely need in these difficult times. And Claire Massoud, a marvelous American novelist, best known uh, for her, uh, of course, her novel, The Emperor's uh, Children, uh, uh, and, and for many others, uh, uh, a novel which uh, she wrote while at the Radcliffe Institute. Is that right? and, uh, uh, and uh, Claire Massoud, of course, brings to us, uh, of course, a transatlantic perspective, uh, uh, born in France, uh, having lived around the world, exploring the many uh, edit, uh, eddies and currents of our language, and we look forward as well uh, to her sharing her language, her thoughts, her words in this very special place, a space, a, a space that, as Michael says, has celebrated not only the glories of visual arts, but the glory of language and our capacity for critical thought and conversation. So we'll now hear, in turn, uh, from our distinguished speakers. There'll then be an opportunity for several members of the faculty to come and share their reflections. And then for a broader, true conversation, we hope, uh, all positions are open. We are all engaged in a struggle uh, uh, to explore the very nature of our language, through which we ponder what it means, as we say in the title, to preserve trust. What role does art, does the museum, does the aesthetic have in a time of great economic challenge? Thank you.
so I'll... Um, so if I can first ask Stephen Greenwood.